Hello, this is Hildron here from the CC here today to talk about HTML5 animation. I will show you how to make some animation, and not just animation, but things that are actually interactive. Now, HTML5 is kind of like Flash, except it uses way less resources, and it doesn't need a plugin to run. It just runs right out of the browser. So, if you are familiar with Flash animation, it's basically the same thing, except it's going to be HTML5, so the graphics will be a lot better, and it won't require a plugin to run. And not to mention it'll run on more systems, especially mobile systems. So what I'm using is Hype. It's a program you can get directly from the Mac App Store. It's really easy to use. I tried it out, and just everything I did worked. I didn't need to even think twice about something. I just used some common sense and clicked something, and it worked. It's so it's pretty simple. It's only $29. Bucks. They have a $29.99. They have a 14-day free trial as well. So let's get into it. All right, this is the default canvas. What I'm going to do first is you can have the inspector won't be open by default, but if you want it open, just click the inspector button. And we'll change the size of this. So let's say we want it for a website banner. We'll do 800 by 100. That should fit fine. And here, we this is pretty important. It's a browser compatibility warnings. Typically, if your web browser is the latest version from the company, like from Microsoft or Apple, it'll run HTML5 fine but you still want to read the warnings when you get them. Uh, but it should work just fine for modern browsers. If you don't know a certain size you want, you can look at all these presets. There are a ton that you can choose from, but I know 800 by 100 will do for this. So let's get into some animating. The insert elements button is the main one you're going to be using here. You can just simply select whatever you want. So we're going to do box. And you can just drag this around wherever you want. It has alignment guides and you can resize easily. It's a what you see is what you get editor. It's pretty simple. It also has keyboard shortcuts like in other Mac applications for resizing. Hold down option and you can easily resize both sides simultaneously and snap it into place. Okay, so now we got our shape back here. Let's go to the element inspector and here from fill style, we can choose what we want it to look like. We can set a gradient for instance. I can set this to white to gray borders, opacity, reflections and everything. You can do a lot of stuff in here and you can animate it all. Basically any setting you can change, you can animate. There are a ton of animated parameters here. Um, you can show and hide them just with a click. It's pretty simple. And uh, you don't have to worry about adding them manually because when you click anything, the, um, the timeline will show any new setting you change. For instance, font size. You don't have to worry about going to the menu and finding it. It'll just add it automatically. So let's animate some things. Let's put some text in here. It's pretty simple. You can just edit the text right on screen. Hello world. Select it all. Go to the text inspector. And all these fonts are web safe. So you don't have to worry about that. That's good. Uh, let's do this one here. And we'll just resize it. And once again, alignment guides will kick in when you have it spaced out properly there. And let's animate this text, for example. So we'll expand this in the timeline here so we can get a better view. And we're going to be changing opacity. That is essentially how much you can see through the object. So we'll set it to zero. Press this record button or press command R. And then we'll set our out point to one second. Set it to 100% and press command R again. And as you can see, it's animated already and it shows up in the timeline. And the way it handles keyframes is really genius because it's really easy to realign, re readjust time, and copy and paste keyframes. For example, let's say I want this keyframe on the box and not just the text. All you do is select the keyframes, copy, go to the parameter on the box, and paste. Now we just applied that same opacity effect to the background and it works great. In addition, if you want to retime things, you can just click and drag the end point of the keyframe to wherever you want. And if you want to reposition things, you just drag the center of the keyframe group and you can move it wherever you want. Pretty simple. Now to test this, you just click the little preview button. It will open up your default web browser and it will let you test your HTML5 animation. So it's opening up Safari right here. And there you go. As you can see, that was our animation right there. I'll reload that so you can see it again. It just fades in like that. Very simple. So now let's do some other things. Let's make some interactive parts. There are a lot more things you can do with the animation, but like I said, I want to show you animation and interactivity. So we're going to go to the insert elements thing again and choose a button. 
Now this is really cool how they handle this. When you have a button here, you have three tabs up here, normal, hover, and pressed. If you know, when you click on buttons on certain websites, sometimes they change color when you click them and sometimes they change color when you hover over them. That's exactly what these indicate. So for hover, for instance, we'll go back to the element inspector here. We can change this color to a gradient and make it blue and white. So that's what that will look like. And for the pressed, we'll make it, let's do, let's do another color gradient here. And we'll make it a lighter blue and black. All right, so now we got our button made here and we have our three colors set. Uh, white just for the normal button. Hover over it, you get this blue gradient and pressed, you get this sort of turquoise gradient. So now let's program this button to do something. Under the mouse action inspector, you can simply program what you want to happen with this button. So let's say on mouse click, we want it to go to URL. We'll go to http colon slash slash apple.com, for example. And we can double click this button and rename it Apple Website. So now when you preview this, you'll get your animation, but you'll also get this button. When we hover over it, it changes color. And when we click it, it changes color. And it also brings us to the website that we programmed it to bring us to. So that works pretty simple. You can also have it run JavaScripts. You can also have it jump to a certain part in the timeline or a different scene in your animation here. So it is pretty simple to make these things. You don't need no code or any of that stuff. It just, it works. It's pretty simple. So try this out yourself. See if you can get anything to work. I just did a really basic example. I might do some more advanced things in the future if and when I buy this program. So I hope you enjoy the tutorial and see you later.